All right. Um, once again, welcome to today's live class. And uh, what I'm going to be teaching today are entry patterns and entry candles. So these are the things that triggers my entry. If I have a zone marked out, I don't just take a buy or a sell when price gets there. I want to take a buy or a sell after seeing a confirmation. So I'm going to teach you various confirmations and I'll tell you the ones I majorly look out for on my most traded pairs, which is Euro JPY and GBP USD. So I want you to stay tuned, stay till the end, because you're going to really benefit a thing or two that will change your trading completely. That's an assurance. I might not assure you how much you will make, but I can assure you that it's going to change your trading game completely. Completely because it changed mine, okay? So now let's dive right into the charts. Let's dive right into the charts. Amazing. So um, first of all, what are, can, uh, what are entry candles, right? Entry mm -hmm. triggers. There are things that you see in the market that makes you know that, okay, yes, opposing pressure are coming. Do you understand? Or um, if no opposing pressure, a continuation is ready. For example, um, for example, here we have price going up, up, down. So this bullish engulfing candle, this red and white. So the white covered the red. That was a confirmation that yes, buyers are in. So we now buy, we start buying from the close of the bullish engulfing into the next high. Do you understand? The price came down again. A confirmation would be. For me, it's be this indecision can do for some people they wait for a bullish engulfing or three white soldiers, first white soldier, second white soldier, third white soldier will enter this place, or you wait for the bullish engulfing, which happened later on here. And entering here, when price goes up, come back down into that zone, you ride it into the next psychological level or the next high. Do you understand? So these are various entry candles. For example, after this now price came down, what was the confirmation that there was? A, that the buy will not be ready. The confirmation was this bullish engulfing pattern we, we can see right here. So this bullish engulfing pattern right here tells us that yes, the buyers are in and are ready to continue the current move in the market. Buyers are in and are ready to continue the current move in the market. Hence why we saw a new buy into this zone. So these are entry candles. Now, what confirmed our sale buyers? We saw this uh, bearish engulfing. Well, now, let's assume that was not enough. Let's assume that was not enough. Right here, we see a, bear, a heavy bearish engulfing. After a bullish, we see a very heavy bearish candle. Imagine entering your sale right here and you're targeting the next low, which is here, or maybe here. And that will be a very clean one, all because you know how to enter. What if you were trying to enter here and price kept on going up? You would be wrong because you didn't see any confirmation. So, you know, as much as price is in your zone, you should not enter. Hence, why I don't always advise sell limits. Uh, I don't advise limit orders. I don't like it. I, I detest it a lot. If I give you that, it's because I know that that's the only thing that will help you out because you have a very busy schedule. If not, I want to give you something that you enter right now. If you don't enter it right now, I want you to enter it um, when it is ready. I'm just going to look at your chart. I want you to be familiar with your chart. There are other candlesticks entry patterns I'm going to show you. Um, for example, after this move to the downside, we see these three candles here, this heavy red, this uh, indecision and heavy buy. Those three candles together, every time you see them, it denotes a reversal. Every single time you see them, these things are things I'm going to go in depth into this class. And I want you to stay till the very end. So I'm going to give room for questions. And guess what? I'm going to answer every single question. Every single question, leaving none out. Leaving none out. Okay? So now let's dive right into this class. Let's dive right into this class. So the first on my list is the hammer, the hammer, the hammer. Now, what is the hammer? Please let everybody go back to the group. I've sent you a picture. Doesn't matter where you got the link from, go back to that place. I sent a picture already. Go there, I sent the picture of the hammer. I sent a picture of the hammer and I'm going to show you right here on the chat. I'm going to show you right here on the chat. So the hammer, if it's a bullish hammer, no, where there's no bearish hammer. The bearish hammer is what they call shooting star. But hammer, 
is bullish and it must be the color of a bullish candle, not red. What do I mean? Look at this. There's another kind of, of entry candle, this red armor, this red one that has a long week down. So armor, what happens in an armor is the armor is a bullish reversal pattern that forms during a downtrend. So when we are in a downtrend, that uh, armor forms. And guess what? It is named because the market is hammering out a bottom. Hence, buyers are coming in and sellers are losing momentum. A typical example of confirmation would be to wait for a white candlestick to close above to open to the right side of the armor. Do you understand? This now talks about colors. So me, my own chart here is white. Hence why I was talking about a white candlestick. If your chart is red and green, it will be a green candlestick. If you understand what I'm saying so far, I want you to put 777 in the chat box. Please talk to me. If you understand what I've said so far, put 77. You don't understand, put 55, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I said there is the arm, there is the other type of armor. So they are the same shape, the same way, but different colors. So when it is okay, everybody understands. Amazing. So when it is white, all right, when it is the same color with your uptrend, it is called hammer. When it is the same color with your downtrend, but the same shape as that hammer, it's called hanging man. Hold on, let me explain. So this one is red. You see this, this one here? Let me zoom out for you guys to see. So you see this one here? This, this red candle here, where my cursor is. This red candle here, all right? That red candle is what we call hanging man because it, the color is red. The color is not white. The color is red. But guess what? This one here is what we call armor. This white here, because it is white. So this one and this one are the same, the same shape, but different colors. Hence, they have different names, but they all mean the same thing. Now, I've told you about the armor, which is the same color with the bullish move on your chart. While the hanging man is a bearish reversal pattern that can also mark a top or strong reversal level. When price is rising, the formation of the hanging man indicates that sellers are beginning to outnumber buyers. So what do I mean? And the only way this, this hanging man, the only way it can be a valid one is if it has a strong bullish and right after a strong bearish. Something like this now. Strong bearish right after a strong bullish. If you can see that same thing on the inverse, then we can say our hanging man is valid. If you don't see it, sorry, but hanging man is not valid. Let me look for something. If I can find it, if I don't find it, um, if I go to one minute time frame, I'll find it. But there's a lot of noise in that chat. There's a lot of noise on the one minute chat. So if I go there, I'll find it. I can bet it. Hanging man. Let me quickly look for it. Just hold on. Just hold on, let me look for an example in the chat because we need to see an actual example. I've shown you an example of one. I need to show you the example of more so that you can believe that, yes, it works. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is Nigeria, so I'm taking the lights. And I don't like teaching from my small screen. It's really very tight for me. So um, I believe everybody can still see my screen, though it's now smaller. But uh, I believe everybody can see it. So let's look for hammer, a rather hanging man. Okay, here we are, hanging man. Look at this. I told you that it's the same shape with the hammer. It does weak down. It doesn't have as much weak up, right? So here we are. After this hanging man, what happened? What happened? We saw a very heavy sell. A very heavy sell. Now, it doesn't automatically mean every time you see it, the price is going to go in that direction. No. What it means is it's denoting that there is a possible reversal coming. Denotes that it's a possible reversal coming. So the first, like I said, is the uh, hanging man. 
which is uh, no, the first is Ama, second is Angi Man. Then now I'm going into the next real quick. But hold on, let me do this. I'm going into the next real quick. All right. I'm going into the next real quick. Um, after Hama and Angi Man, the next year is Inverted Ama. Inverted Ama, that's the next I have on my list. Inverted Ama is denoting an uptrend, not a downtrend. So what do I mean? If these patterns, I'm telling you, if you find them on a support level, guess what? Is the, and now this is less about the color. It's less about the color. It's more about where you are finding it. If you are finding it at the resistance zone, it's going to act as a reversal into the downtrend. You find it as a support level, you're going to serve, uh, uh, serve as a reversal into the sub, into the uptrend. Is up there now? See the phone there, off it. Thank you. So um, I was talking about the armor, right? So the armor is going to serve as a reversal into the uptrend. Now the armor, same thing that we spoke about. This is the armor. It does long week up. Doesn't have weak down. What happened when we when we saw the armor is denoting that bro, there's an uptrend coming. Now you see, you see this guy. You now saw after it a bullish engulfing pattern. That's more confirmation. Hence why we saw this heavy buy into this uptrend, right? This heavy buy because we had a confirmation. So when price gets into your level, wait for a close of candle. You want to see confirmation. Price will not just enter your level and run out. Nope. If it does that, it's going to come back. See. Because it has left a week. This is the week here it left. Price came back to fill up the week. Every time price leaves a week, it's going to come back to fill it up. So don't just rush in. You see price shooting into your zone without any, 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 any pattern being formed. And you're trying to buy, 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 buy. That's not professional. Uh, now the next we have here is shooting star. Shooting star is the same with armor. Just that it's denoting a downtrend. Same with armor. But it's not in a downtrend. Where is shooting star? See shooting star here. Remember this. If you find this this pattern on a support level, is denoting an uptrend. If you find this pattern on a reverse on on a resistance level, it's denoting a downtrend. So this is the resistance level, and we see this week above, no week below. So is imagine an armor. Imagine a armor rather. If you are, if the armor is standing like this, uh. Or like this is the same thing I'm talking about. Just that they mean different things at different levels of the market. All right. So the first armor standing like this in a support level is denoting an uptrend. The first, the next armor standing like this, no, rather like this in a resistance level is denoting a downtrend. Now, if you find the armor inverted, inverted, so it's called inverted armor in a support level is denoting an uptrend also. In a resistance level, it's denoting a downtrend. Rather, in a resistance level, it's denoting a downtrend. Support level, it's denoting uptrend. Resistance level, it's denoting downtrend. I want you to pay attention to that. So whenever you see any candlestick pattern, you want to know what it means. Now, right after these things, the next thing that price usually follows through, because like I said, those things are, are more of um, symmetrical patterns. So they can mean anything, depending on where you find them. But there's something that cannot mean anything. For example, bullish engulfing, if you see it's in the resistance level, please don't sell. Don't say, okay, Coach David said, if you see a pattern in the resistance level, sell. No. Bullish engulfing is the next thing I'm talking about. If you find it in the resistance level, please don't sell. Bullish engulfing pattern is a two candlestick reversal pattern that signals a strong move to the upside may occur. It happens when a bearish candle is immediately followed by a larger bullish candle. For example, this. This is a bearish candle, a large bullish candle. Do you understand what I'm saying? A large bullish candle. Same, bearish candle, large bullish candle. It happened twice. Third one, you should not wait for it to happen before you enter. Third one, enter, sir. Right? Just enter. Because it denotes strong moves to the upside may occur. Are there times that you see bullish engulfing pattern in, in a resistance level 
but price will not will not buy. Yes, for example, yes, see bullish engulfing pattern. But instead, price sold. That I said after a bullish engulfing pattern, when you enter, your SL should be just below this low. So if you come back to eat your SL, guess what? You're not sad. Your SL should be below the next recent low. So after this bullish engulfing, the next recent low will be this low here. And SL will just chill. Keep my answer here. If it comes back to hit me, no problem. But always take the reversal patterns when they are at good structural points. For example, a down um, in a downtrend, when you see bullish engulfing pattern in a strong support level, it means there's a buy coming in. Same with bearish engulfing. Bearish engulfing is a bullish candle engulfed by a bearish candle. Now, this bearish candle covered the bullish candle, and now it happened in a resistance zone, hence why I will trust the mega sell. Hence why I will trust the mega sell. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hence why I will trust the mega sell. So if, if you find, if you find a, I hope you guys can see my screen. You can see my screen, please talk to me. Okay, yes, you can see. Okay, if you find a bearish engulfing pattern in a resistance zone, it denotes that a sell is coming. If you find bearish engulfing pattern in a support level, please don't buy, don't sell. That is manipulation, right? I hope you are writing down these things. I've thought for no five, six candlestick patterns. First was the hammer. I said, the hammer is standing like this. Oh, how will I explain this now that you understand? Imagine this is that place where you hit, like where you hit the nail. This is the head of the armor, right? So this is the head of the armor standing like this. In a support level, it means a buy is coming. In a resistance level, it means a sell is coming. I'm not standing like this. In a support level, it means a buy is coming. In a resistance level, it means a sell is coming. But bullish and golfing is only valid in an up is only valid in a support level. Same with bearish engulfing. Same with what bearish engulfing. Please pay attention and take note of that. Um, then uh, that's six hundred six patterns of thoughts right now. Let me go into the next one. I want to teach you tweezer bottom, tweezer bottom, tweezer bottom, tweezer bottom. Uh, let me look for an example. Swizzer bottom, Swizzer bottom. Swizzer bottom is when two candlesticks have the same low, but those low are weeks. And that was more on 15 minutes charts. So let's check 15 minutes charts. I've seen an example of tweezer top, but let me look for tweezer bottom. It's tweezer top. Okay, see tweezer bottom here. See tweezer bottom here, guys. See tweezer bottom here. Tweezer bottom. So when you see candle leaving weeks below twice. So me, I, me on if you notice, um, this is one of my best entry candles. I always tell you, wait for weak rejection. I call it weak rejection. If you, if you have heard me say weak rejection before, say yes. You have heard me say weak rejection before. Just write yes, yes. You have heard me say wait for weak rejections. That's my confirmation entry. It happened more on 15 minutes chart. So when I say weak rejection, I'm talking about tweezer bottom. I want to see two weeks below. Two weeks below. Almost the same bottom or same bottom. Like the same length, exactly. Then same with the top. I told you that it happened more on 15 minutes chart. Very common. See to that top here. Yeah. To that top here. Yeah. Before every buy, price will give us to that top. See another to that top here. Yeah. And before every sell, rather. See another to that top here. Yeah. Right? It happens every time in the market. Every time. Every time in the market. Before a major move, price will give us to that top or to that bottom. Ooh. 
Well, this is not a very clear Twitter bottom, but this is clear also because it has weeks, long weeks are both. Right? So once you see weeks, okay, this is the perfect example. Oh my God, look at the perfect example here. This is the perfect example. After this, what are you waiting for? Just sell. Just sell. Sell. Don't think twice. Look at perfect example, tweezer bottom, uh, tweezer top. This is tweezer top here, because that's two equal highs, all right? Even if it's not equal, if it's long weeks, two long weeks ahead, it's also valid. But when it's equal, it's more valid. Same way we have tweezer bottoms, we have tweezer tops, and I've thought that already. And uh, tweezer top denotes a downtrend, tweezer bottom denotes an uptrend. Now we have something called morning star. Morning star. Morning star. This one I already marked it out on the charts. Morning star already marked it out on the charts. So it's very easy to find. See it here. These three candles together. These three candles together. It's called morning star. These three candles together. It's called morning star. And there are three candles, there are triple candlestick patterns you can usually find at the end of a trend, end of the downtrend, the upwind, and boom, we entered into an uptrend. Do you understand? The first candlestick is bearish, and the second candlestick is a small body, which reverses to an indecision in the market. Remember what I call this indecision. Then right after, the third candle acts as a confirmation that the reversal is in place as the candle closes beyond the midpoint of the first candle. So this third candle must close above 50% of this first bearish candle. So you doesn't have to cover it, but if it closes above 50% of it, like here now, sell, indecision, buy, above 50% of it, it ends is valid. If you don't find it, it's not valid. If it doesn't close above at least 50%, it's not valid. At least 50%. Like now, this one is valid. Uh, this one is not valid because this is the buy. This is, this is more like it don't say this is And this sell did not even enter 50%. So this was not a valid to the uh, evening star. But for morning, morning star is the one that happens down, evening star is the one that happens up. So this is a very clear candlestick pattern. So whenever, for example, let's say I, I call it buy as 144000, but I have not seen any confirmation. And you just see this thing around 143900. You, you will get a better entry. Compared to others, you will get a better entry compared to others. You will get a better entry compared to others. I'm serious because you waited for a confirmation. That way, if you even keep your SL below this tweezer bottom, you can't be wrong. Just keep your SL like 10 pips, 20 pips below that tweezer bottom. You can't be wrong. You can't go wrong on that. So that's a very important candlestick pattern you need to pay attention to. You really need to pay attention to it. Then evening star is the next one. Evening star is just like the morning star but it is the inverse of it. Let me look for a very clear example. All right. Well, this is not really in decision, so I can't consider that one. But let me look for a clearer example, but that was a good one though, even though it's not a clear example. Let me look for a clearer example. Let me look for a clearer example. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. This is a clear example. Right here, we see a bullish, we see indecision, we see a bearish that came at least 50% of the first bullish. Hence why we see heavy sell. If you keep your SL just above this place, 10, 20 pips above, you can't be wrong. You understand? You can't be wrong. You can't be wrong. You couldn't have been wrong. You couldn't have been wrong. Price will never come at either SL. If you hit the SL, it invalidates that setup. It's telling that the setup is not more valid. It's no longer valid. So whenever you guys are like, ah, Coach David, how, how do you find sniper entries? I just laugh. I don't find sniper entries. I don't find perfect entries. I try to perfect my entry every single time. Some people are tired in, on the call. I think you need to stand up and jump and move your body around so that you don't slip off. If you're tired, you need to move your body around. This is a very important class. So don't be tired, okay? Don't be tired. Don't be, I want to see your face. So don't close your camera. Don't close your camera. So right after that, we have the next one, which is three white soldiers. You used to hear me say this on a lot. Right? Three white soldiers, three white soldiers, three white soldiers, three white soldiers. The first of the three white soldiers is called the reversal candle. 
it ends the downtrends or implies that the period of consolidation followed uh, of consolidation that followed the downtrend is over. To be considered valid, the second candlestick must be bigger than the previous candlestick's body. The third candlestick should also close near its high, leaving a small or non-existence upper wick at the same for the third candle. What that statement simply means is, let me look for a, uh, a clear example of three wise soldier first before I start talking. Clear example of three wise soldier. Well, this is clear. Okay, this is clear, but this is not always, it doesn't always happen like this in the market. As I don't want to pick this one. This one looks too, too real, too real. This one looks like textbook, what happened in the market. But let me just talk about this one, even though it, it, it looks too real. So the first candle, second candle, second candle, no, this is not even valid. Second candle must be bigger than the first candle. So that's not valid. Second candle must be bigger than the first candle. Not should be, must be. Not should be, must be. Okay, here we are. Here we are, guys. Here we are. So three white soldiers. We have the first candle, second candle bigger than the first candle. Third candle must not leave any week below. It does not, and it doesn't need to leave a long week above. It, it can leave week above, but not say long one. But it must not leave any week below. So first, second. Third, your entry is at the close of the third candle. Imagine entering your buy here. You ride how many pips into the next psychological level? Oh boy, you ride 60 pips. 60 pips into the next psychological level. 60 pips is a lot of pips. Just because you know how to identify three white soldiers. And I've taught this before. Three white soldiers are three candlesticks going towards a direction. But the first candlestick is the entry candle or confirmation candle. The second must be bigger than the first. Second candlestick must be bigger than the first. Not should be, it must be. If it's not bigger than the first, please. It's not a valid three white soldier. Same with the three black crows, three black crows, just exactly the same. Just exactly the same, but it's the inverse of it. Exactly the same, but the inverse of it. And it's more common in a downtrend. It's very common in a downtrend. Very, very common in a downtrend. Um, let me look for an example. It's very, very common in a downtrend. Okay, this was also a safe entry. Three black, uh, three um, three black crows. First candle, more like indecision entry candle, and that's where we entered from. Second candle was bigger than the first. Third candle was bigger than the third. Though this one left a week, it's not supposed to leave a long week above. But this, even though this one left a week, it was still a valid one, right? It was still a valid one, even though it left a week. And right after the close of the third candle, imagine you are entering this cell here. Oh my God, how many pips into our take profit level? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Riding it all the way down, you're getting 350 pips, 350 pips, a lot of pips, a lot of pips, just because you know how to identify three black crows. So when price have moved, you say, our oh, coach, have, have, have I missed the price? I've not missed the price. Wait for the pattern that is trying to form on a higher time frame, like five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour. You know, one hour is not always clear because that's a bigger time frame. But if you find a clean candlestick pattern on the 15 minutes chart, I always love to enter with that. I'm okay with 15 minutes as my confirmation for entry, right? I'm okay with that as my confirmation for entry. Then um, the other one is not really common, so I'll not teach. I'll not teach you that one. It's not really common. 
It's not really common in the market. It's not really common in the market. Though it happens, but it's not really common. So I will not teach you that one. It's not necessary. I see. All right. But then let me ask questions, really. What kind of stick pattern is this? First person that gets my answer, you're going to get my WhatsApp number if you don't have it. If you have it, I'll give you something else as a gift. This kind of stick pattern, I just identified now. First person to type the answer out. What's the name? What's the name? This this kind of, this three ones, this three together. Evening Star, Edo Priest. You have my WhatsApp number already. But I'll give you a gift. Come to my DM uh, after the class. I'll give you a gift. Okay, let's look for another example. Let's do for another example. Let's do for another example. Let's do for another example. What's this song called? This one that is, that is labeled up. Oh, first person to answer. What was it called? What was it called? First person to type it. Bearish and girlfriend. Nope. Nope. Shooting stars. No. You guys not pay attention in this class. Bearish Arami, no. Tweezers Bottom, no. Tweezers, no. Bullish Engulfing, no. Inverse Hammer, no. Tweezers Top, God bless you, Bami Dele. Tweezers Top, yes. Tweezer top. I said when you see weak rejections above, it's tweezer top. Weak rejections below, it's tweezer bottom. Mam Dele, come to my DM. I owe you a gift. In fact, I'll fund your account for you. I don't know if there's money there already, but I'll fund your account for you. I promise you that. Um, let me look for another example. What is this one? These three candles together. What is it called? The three candles together. What is it called? Morning star. Nope. Evening star. Nice. Nice. I asked the question before. I wanted to ask it again to be sure you paid attention. Okay. I told you where yeah, tweezer top is going to be valid is if you are in is if you are in a, a resistance level. So why did this one not hold? Because this one is a tweezer top, a lot of weak rejections. Why did it not hold? Someone should give me a reason. I might just ask you maybe one thousand dollars like that. Too. I might. I might not dash you safe. No extra. What's extra? Support level. No. It's not a valid structural level. Yeah, honor. Nice. It's not a valid structural level. All right. Hence, that's liquidity to be cleared. It's not a valid structural level. 
Oh no. I owe you a gift. So I owe three people gifts now, be okay. But it's not money I'm owing on now. On and the, the first guy. I do. The only one person I promise money. So very common candlestick pattern. What's it called? Very common. If you feel this one, I'm supposed to send it to your village. You fade this one, I'm supposed to send it to your village. What's it called? The two candles together. Bearish and golf in Prissy Kumi. Nice. Nice. So when I call it a, 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 a trade, go to your trading view and mark out the level I called out. Then wait for price to come into that level and form a pattern for you. How about this one? If I call a trade, don't just jump in. Go to your trading view, mark out my levels, watch price forming, pattern triggers entries then, exactly. So entry is only telling you where I think the price will move from. When I go beyond it and later move, like this was our first entry, the price came into some profit and went out, came back, played all around, I guess what? Played all around over the midnight. Next morning, came back to sell from that same point where I marked out. That same point. That same point. Do you understand? So, always wait for confirmation. Don't just jump in. That's not how a trader should enter the market. Don't jump in. All right? Don't jump in. Don't jump in. Now we agreed that uh, this pattern, this pattern where it is currently denoting a sale, right? Right? Yes or yes? That inverted ammo is for what time frames are best for entries? 15 and five minutes. Five minutes, 15 minutes, best for entries. So that is denoting. Is sell. But I have a question, sir. I don't know if it's only me that have the same question. But we are seeing the same pattern here. My question is why the price not sell? Who answer the question for me? Why the price not sell? Why? Why the price not sell? Why? Someone should answer me. Why did price not sell? Price took out liquidity. Nope. There was a structure there. Nope. Still a structural level. Only if Yika, amazing. It's obviously not a valid structural level. Yes, honor, amazing. Because we are still in the uptrend. Yes, Frank, amazing. Those are valid reasons. We are still in an uptrend. I told you that those hammer. When you see it in a support level, it means a buy. When you see it in a resistance level, it means a sell. So this was a bullish pattern, even though it was the same color with the bearish pattern. That was a bullish confirmation because it's happening in a support level. So your focus should be how to understand, how to draw structure. That's why every time in the class, I always draw structure. I don't know if you guys have observed, every time I draw structure again, like I said, uh, we are newbies. But I like it. You no, know, I want you to be familiar with how I draw structure. That is how to draw structure. I, I always draw structure every single time. Guess what? I'm going to teach another class again. Structure. I will still draw structure. If you know how to identify structure, you will know structural levels for buys, structural levels for sales, and you'll be looking at taking advantage of it. Do you understand? You'll be looking at taking advantage of it. You'll be looking at taking advantage of it. Last question for the day. If I go into part two of today's class. Part two. Last question. After this pattern formed, obvious bearish pattern, right? Where should I keep my SL?
Where should I keep my SL? Above the weeks. Um, above the week, yeah. Price will take me out. Above the previous high. Edo praise, you are wise. You don't understand the question. Frank, sorry. Above the high of the pattern, 10 to 20 pips above. Amazing. So if you don't find any most recent high, right? If you don't find any most recent high, then pick your SL as 10 to 20 pips above. See? 20 pips above is here. Yeah. But if you find a recent high, keep your SL above the recent high, which is here. And that would be like maybe 23 pips. You don't understand the question. Okay, let me ask it again. I told you that when we see this pattern, it means there's a sale coming, right? This bearish pattern, yeah. It's called evening star, right? Now, when I want to enter this trade, where should I keep my SL? That's my question. And someone said above this white week, price will take me out because price came back up before it dropped finally. So where should I have kept my SL? And then we got someone that gave us the right answer that said above the most recent high, which is this level here. This level here, can you see my big, my big arrow? This level here is the most recent high, hence why we need to keep our SL above it. Okay? So I think I'm okay with this, at least you guys have an understanding. So whether or not I'm in the market, you can go into the market. Once you can draw structure one, see, you see everything I have in my strategy is so I can teach you better how to draw structure. That's all I taught in my strategy. That's all I do in my strategy. I want you to be able to draw structure like the way I draw structure and even better. Do you understand? Hence why every single time when I'm talking about the strategy, I, I, I amplify structure and amplify entry a lot. So once you can draw structure and you now know entry triggers, go ahead and trade without Coach David. You don't need Coach David again. That's the aim. I don't want you to be needing me every time. Learn how to draw structure. Learn how to uh, enter, enter the market with nice entry patterns. And boom, you don't need to go to David again. Um, now, part two of today's class, real quick. We don't have so much time. I'll just hit on chart patterns. I'll not go into details, so much details. But hit on chart patterns. So let me quickly send a picture to the group right now. But while we are waiting for that, if you have questions, please go ahead and ask. If you have questions, please go ahead and ask. I want to answer all your questions now. We have to ask them now. All right. I want to answer all your questions now, but you have to ask them now. Some people that are not on the call because in their time this is still midnight, so maybe they slept late or something. I know Sadi always loves to join the call, she didn't join. I know a lot of other people too. So the bilateral chart patterns they can either mean a buy or a sell, they can either mean a buy or a sell. But the continuation pattern continues the previous trend. Continuation pattern continues the previous trend. Reversal patterns change the trend. You understand? So this is I'm telling you now, please pay attention. Continuation pattern changes the trend. Reversal pattern starts a new trend. Bilateral chart, uh, chart patterns can either mean anything depending on where you find it. Depending on where you find it, okay? So let me zoom out now so I can address each of these chart patterns that I've, that I've sent to the group. So I've sent them to the group. Now let me now explain them for you to see. I believe you have seen the chart patterns. Now let me explain them from the bilateral. Bilateral, it means it can either buy or sell. It can either change trend or not change trend. 
Who's David? What do you mean? Which kind of thing be all this one where they talk like this? Let me look for an example. So here we have the first bilateral chart pattern, which is ascending triangle. This is an ascending triangle here. You see price along the same high, but well, guess what? Price is giving us something like, uh, what do you call it? It's giving us, what do you call it? Same high, but look at this. Like a slams kind of low. You understand? Now, this is not so much of a clear pattern, no? but what I'm trying to draw is this. This is what I'm trying to draw here. When you see price do this, across the same high. So inside of this, price will be moving up and down, up and down, up and down. It'll be buying and selling, buying and selling. It'll be buying and selling, but to just be along the same high and low, along the same high and low along the same high and low, along the same high and low. That's what price is going to be doing. So in this case, if you see a break to the upside, you just join the buy. But if you see a break to the downside, you just join the sell. For example, from here, you see price come down, you just join the sell. Do you understand? So this is, it's not a flag, sir. I'll show you flag. It is triangle. You understand? So it forms a triangle. It's not a flag. I know flag. This one forms a triangle. So let me explain now because I, I saw that pattern on GBP USD some days ago and I traded it very clean. Let me look for it if I can bring it out. Let me look for it if I can bring it out. I saw that pattern on GBP USD. That was here. Yes. Let me bring it out so I can show you. So whenever I see that pattern, or whenever I see patterns in the market, I just want to take advantage of it as much as possible. Yes, so here we are. You understand? So this is, well, this is not an ascending triangle. This is a symmetric triangle. This is a symmetric triangle, but they mean the same thing. Just that this one, <clears throat> just that in an ascending triangle, you will see higher, higher lows, but equal highs. This one, we are seeing lower, lower highs, equal lows. So all I needed to do was wait for a breakout and then boom, I joined the buy. Or I wait for price to come into the lowest point and I joined the buy. Either of them, that's the safest way to trade it. When you see the candle, I traded this. I bought. You understand? But I didn't call it out. Why did I not call it out? Because it happened so quickly. It's on one minute time frame. I didn't call it out. Means sideway. Uh, sideway, no. No. So price will be moving. Like as if it's consolidating. However, it's going to be forming higher highs and um, higher lows equal highs. Or higher highs equal lows. Either ways, whatever it does there, it, but one but one of it must be equal high or equal low. Why the other one will be either higher or lower, depending. But one must be equal. One of the highs or lows must be equal. That's a triangle. All right, same with descending triangle, same with so symmetrical triangle was one, or this is this one I'm just showing you right now. Symmetric triangle is this one I'm just showing you now, right? So, either way, once you see that triangle forming, can mean anything. Wait for a breakout or wait for the lowest point. 
So either you buy at the edge or you sell at the edge or you wait for a breakout, which is a safer entry, honestly. Now, consideration chart patterns. We have falling wedge, 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 falling wedge. Let's go. The noise is too much on one minute chart. Let me look for falling wedge for you guys. Again, this is that same chart pattern again that I just talked about. See it here. A move up equal highs. And now look at this. You're seeing something like a move down. You understand? And then we are seeing something like a move down. So this is this is also known as uh it can mean it can mean a buy or a sell. So if price breaks above, we look for buys. If price breaks below, we look for sales. Do you understand? So if you have that on a support level, then all you're looking for is buys. If you have that on a resistance level, all you're looking for is sales. Um, why for falling wedge? Falling wedge, ah, why will I look for this thing now? Oh, because it's not every time we see all these chance patterns, but whenever we see them, we want to make sure we take advantage of them. It's not every time we see them, but whenever we see them, we want to just take advantage of them very quickly. All right. Let me look for a typical example. If I don't find one now, then maybe I'll you allow me to go and look for an example, then I'll come and share with you guys in the class, um, on the group rather. Maybe, mm, but let's see if we can find one. Like I said, if we don't, then we'll just call it a day and then go and look for something later on. So I didn't find falling wedge. So, okay, I found falling wedge. Okay, thank God. See falling wedge here. Yeah. It move up, then lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. It's, it's continuation because it's going to continue the buy. So this is a falling wedge here. It has, it has a, this kind of vibe. It's giving this kind of vibe. Do you understand? Giving us this kind of vibe. So some people call it bullish flag. Right? So now for bullish flag, there are different kinds of bullish flags. There's bullish pennant, there's falling wedge. You understand? There is a, what do you call it? Bullish rectangle. So let me delete this one and I'll go and show you bullish rectangle right now. I saw it earlier when I was looking for bullish, just falling wedge. There's bullish rectangle. Did I see that thing? Realize I don't pass around. I think I've passed it. Okay. I've passed it actually. I passed it. Let me look for it again. If I'll find it, if I don't find it, then. Man, I'm so stressed. I don't, I, I didn't find it. Don't worry. Okay, see, see it here, see it here, see it here, see another one here. If you go to one minute time frame, you'll see it clearly. So bullish rectangle. After you buy, you see consolidation. Then guess what? Break. Retest, continue the buy. Do you understand? So when you see that consolidation, but well, it must be in a in a relevant 
structural point. Hence why I keep hammering on structure. Because price might have sold. Yes, sir. It might have sold. But because it's in a structural zone or it has not gone to a structural sales zone, that to buy into the sales zone. Do you understand? Um, bullish pennants, all of these things. Just study them. Study them. Look for examples of them in the chat. So the same way I'm trying to study them and look for examples, I've sent you pictures. Go and look for examples. The most common reversal patterns I like are double bottoms, double tops, or head and shoulder, or rising wedge, falling wedge. You know me already. You guys know me already. So either I do head and shoulder, or I do double top, or I do flag pattern, which is rising wedge or falling wedge. Right? You, you guys already know that that's what I love. I love it so much. All right, so if I wanted to enter here, this first touch, I wish for second touch, boom. And I'll ride it, that's double top. I love it so much. You guys already know me for that. You guys already know me for that. Oh. Well, I think that's all for me today. I don't have so much anymore to share. I've shared out what I wanted to share. All right, so that's all for me today. However, let me just look into the market if I'll see anything for us. If there's nothing, then we'll call it a day. Uh, this guy still needs to buy. EJ. Let's drop Fibonacci. 70.5, I want to buy. 70.5 Fibonacci. So anywhere in this zone, I want to buy. I'll keep my SL below this level here. I'm looking for a possible buy here on EJ. Keep my SL below this level, which is 25 pips. Um, my target is not going to be minus and seven, obviously. My target is going to be this height here. Yeah. But this height, price failed to break it earlier. Hence why I'll target it, because price might fail to break it also. That's about 150 pips TP. I want to buy it inside this zone, all right? Um, and it's a good psychological level. It's around 143,000. So that's a good psychological level. When price gets here, there's another block here that price will not respect. Yeah, price will not respect this other block. Hence why I want price to clear the other block and come and take me in, all right? So that's all for me today. I don't have so much to share with you guys. So see you at the top, not from the top. Because you know what they said, the bottom is way too crowded. If you have questions, please. Okay, coach, please give us a date on the structure class. Ah, shit. Uh, Mr. Charles, um, DLT structure. Either we do it next week or I'll do a special class for that. Either we do it next week or I'll just create a special time and do a special class. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do.